um, our gathering is termed a public hearing on the Western Cape Transport and um, Infrastructure Bill. So welcome to the members who are in the chamber today um, and our officials and guests. And a hearty welcome to all the members and guests and officials that are connected virtually. Um, I hope that um, you will have a fruitful engagement with um, the content of the bill that is going to be presented to, to, to us tonight. So for us to establish whether we can proceed um, with um, this meeting, I'd like the members who are present, firstly in the chamber, to introduce themselves. Andrikus van der Westhuizen, member of the Standing Committee on Transport and Public Works. Welcome, and uh, Andrikus van der Westhuizen, Honourable. Um, any members who are virtually connected, will you kindly introduce yourself? Delian Campbell, um, Executive Director, uh, Transport, uh, of City of Cape Town. Uh, uh, thank, thank you, welcome. Um, all the members of the provincial legislature first. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, uh, can I introduce myself also, Chair? Uh, my name is Fricky Rasmus. I am from uh, the Director of Infrastructure Services at Swellendam Municipality. Thank you, Fricky uh, Erasmus. Uh, welcome. Uh, <laughs> Mr. August, are you present? Honorable August, are you yes, present? Yes, thank you. Please thank please. you, Chairperson. Sean August, member of the Standing Committee Transport. Welcome, Honorable uh, August. Any other member? Honorable Mbimbi, are you on, online? Good evening, everybody. My name is Tian Spester. I'm the MMC for Engineering Services at Drakenstein Municipality. Okay, thank you, um, um, Councillor Bester. Um, uh, could I, um, you know, let's just, just, before we continue with the introductions, let me just um, contextualize the rules of engagement. Um, the, this is a hybrid session, meaning that some um, participants are in the chamber and the other participants are connected by MS Teams online. Um, and the rules of engagement for this um, particular gathering is that one, that guests on the platform and members on the platform Please, um, if you will kindly mute yourself, uh, or else we will do it from our side, just to obviate any possible disturbances um, whilst we are proceeding with the uh, agenda. And also, to that guests uh, and part of the members um, are not allowed to... Um, speak when they are not recognized and asked by the chairperson to do so. Members um, these, and guests, there is a hand raising function on the platform. And if you use, if you wish to make a contribution, please use the hand uh, raise function to alert um, the chairperson of your uh, desire to to, to, to raise a matter. If not, you may also use the chat function to um, communicate whatever you wish us to know. On the line, uh, for members who are online, we have our ITC uh, personnel who will provide technical um, assistance to members who may experience technical um, challenges at the beginning of the meeting, as I was saying, that all members will be muted and guests. Um, all videos are um, expected to be switched off 
and a member or a guest may switch on the video and uh, I would encourage that if they participate in the meeting. And in terms of um, raising, you know, conducting our virtual meetings, I remind members of section 10 of the uh, ATC on the 17th of April. And then those rules will um, apply to this meeting. And where these instances and in instances where these directives are not clear or do not cover particular eventuality in respect of this meeting, um, the chairperson shall make a ruling uh, that will then be final. But I don't think ever had it become necessary for the chairperson at any of our um, hybrid or um, virtual meetings to enforce this particular directive. So colleagues and guests on the platform, um, we are very pleased to, to have you with us today um, because we are joined in the chamber by our departmental officials um, and from the Department of Public Transport, we have the Chief Director Road Planning, Mr. Carl October, and we have the Chief Engineer Road Use, uh, Mr. Carstens, and from the Department of the Premier is um, the State Law Advisor, Ms. Tor, and then last, lastly we have also um, Tron Judas Consulting, Mr. S. Fanner. Um, thank you, colleagues and, and, and officials for being present here to assist us in um, navigating through the complexities of the, the bill. So, um, colleagues and, and guests, um, this particular bill was widely circulated to all our um, municipalities and other stakeholders, and um, many of us are, are conversant with the purpose of the bill, but briefly, this bill is to provide for the planning, declaration, design, construction, maintenance, control, management, regulation, upgrading, and rehabilitation of roads, railway lines, and related transport infrastructure in the Western Cape, and for matters connected therewith. So the bill was first introduced in the legislature on the 9th of April, 2021. Then it was advertised in the Provincial Gazette on the 12th of July, 2021, and then the Standing Committee on Transport and Local Government commence dealing with the bill on the 24th of August, 2021. However, due to the impact on COVID, um, there was a, a delay in processing this bill, but um, upon the resumption of um, this um, six, uh, the, this year's uh, parliament, the bill was then subsequently advertised in the Burger, the Cape Argus, City Vision, and the George Herald on the 14th of April. And then on the 17th of April, we had our first public hearing in George. This is the second and the last public hearing dealing with this um, bill. And from here onwards, it will uh, be further process until it is enacted by the Premier and is all assented by the Premier. Um, it will be this year still. So, how we're going to conduct this particular um, sitting is that um, the Chief Director, Mr. October, will again provide a brief presentation that will encapsulate all the various clauses of the bill or the chapters, uh, I, may, I may put it that way. Then um, I, we will facilitate questions regarding 
the presentation. We have received a number of written and oral submissions from a number of stakeholders. Um, and I will engage those stakeholders if they wish to augment um, the submissions that they have made in the past. Uh, and we have also today received a submission from Agri Western Cape. And again, um, I will, um, you know, inquire from them if they wish to, um, you know, share um, verbally um, some of the concerns that they have raised, as well as Mr. Fricky Erasmus from um, Swellendam Municipality. And with that said, colleagues, um, I was just informed that the Honourable um, Vimby is on the line. Uh, uh, Honourable Vimby, uh, be welcome and um, and enjoy the, the presentation for the opt-in time. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Welcome. Thank you. So, colleagues and and and. Um, and those um, guests online, I'm going to hand you over to uh, the Chief Director, uh, Mr. Carl October, who will take us through a presentation. And thereafter, um, we um, will take it from there and give direction thereafter. Thank you, Mr. October. Thank you, Chairperson. I will just share my screen. There's a echo. Let's check. 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 Thank you so much again. That just shows technology. Chair, so thanks again. Um, good evening, everybody. Call October Roads Planning, uh, Chief Director within the Transport Division of Department of Transport and Public Works. Um, Mr. Chair, members of the Standing Committee on Transport, elected officials online. Um, as well as councillors, municipal officials, road authorities, members of the public. Thank you so much for having us this evening to introduce to you the Western Cape Transport in Infrastructure Bill. It is with great pleasure that I introduce the bill at this stage. It's a work that has been in progress for a number of years, involving many officials, individuals, members of the Standing Committee, as well as um, provincial departments. Mr. Chair, you introduced some of the professional team members around the table, and I'd like to thank them. Amanda Tor from Legal, my colleague Skull Carstens within Roads Planning, Mr. Steve Fanner, from Transjuris, Tony Abramson in London at the moment, 
and with us in the meeting virtually, as well as Malcolm Waters, who is my retired colleague from Transport. Thank you so much to the team who has assisted with compiling the bill to date. I think it's appropriate to set the scene by giving us some brief statistics about the department, who is the road authority and custodian of many kilometers of road within the Western Cape. We have about 6,500 kilometers of paved carriageway in the Western Cape, 25,000 kilometers of unpaved ways, and 15,000 of those unpaved carriageways are tracks and minor roads, whilst about the balance of that, about 10,500 are proclaimed unpaved roads. It spreads vastly over the Western Cape, yet 65% of those road users are within the city municipal area, which also shares a, my, a, a very small footprint of the entire network. There are roads that are and have been declared under the roads, the, the current roads ordinance, which is the current um, legislation in place. And some thousand, a thousand kilometers of them can be constituted to be municipal main roads, of which two thirds, um, sorry, three quarters, about 750 kilometers of that is within the Cape Town municipal area. The rest of them are municipal main roads outside the city. These roads are declared under the current ordinance. They carry a high volume of traffic through municipal boundaries and therefore um, they have some provincial significance. Important to mention that because the, the new bill um, addresses roads of joint significance as a particularly new category of classification within the bill. Um, currently, the bill has similar provisions to the ordinance and it includes the main road subsidy. The outline on the screen, firstly, we'll give some context to the bill as it relates to transport legislation. Then we'll follow the process we followed currently to, to where we are in, an, in preceding the enacting of the bill, some background contents within the bill, existing functions under current legislation, and new functions absorbed into the bill, and then some pieces of supporting legislation, like the draft bylaws and regulations that, that would support the bill, as well as some impacts of this bill on personnel and financial matters. Firstly, the context within transport related legislation. The bill provides for provincial road, rail, transport related infrastructure, proclaim roads and rail, for their declaration, their funding, their construction, maintenance and their management, as well as some control and approving activities like advertising and so on related to these infrastructure. Not covered in the bill, but covered elsewhere in our National Land Transport Act 2009. Um, we have provisions for ITPs, integrated transport plans, provincial land transport frameworks, national land transport strategic frameworks. We have within the NLTA also regulation of public transport operations and routes the issuing of operating licenses public transport vehicle for, for public transport vehicles, the regulations of bus contracts, and of course um, the Road Transport Act on the other hand uh, regulates taxi associ associations. The current bill is not related to licensing of, of taxis that's covered elsewhere. In the National Road Traffic Act 1996, we have provisions for road traffic regulation, traffic enforcement, driver and vehicle licensing, and road traffic signs. Not shown on the screen, but also of significance, is the Legal Succession Act of 
South Africa Transport Services Act 9 of 1989 and its amendments. This is a national act which administers transport, uh, transnet and portnet. Here, the Passenger Rail Association is also established separate from transnet. The Metro Rail, of course, operated passenger rail system is owned by Prasa. Then there's the National Ra Railway Safety Regulator Act of 2002. This falls under Transport Ministry, which regulates uh, safety standards and practices for rail services. The process um, currently and um, previously to enact the bill and its regulations. Activities, activities that were covered to date, the bill was introduced as said by the chair on the 9th of April to the legislature. It was advertised in the government gazette in July 2021. We've received, as was indicated, comments from uh, entities like Drakenstein at that stage, municipality, as well as city of Cape Town. The department gave a first briefing to the standing committee on the 24th of August 2021, and uh, the drafting of regulations are currently underway. We had a public hearing in George last week, the 17th of May, and today we in Cape Town. Activities still to be undertaken. The standing committee and the provincial parliament will formally deal with comments and processes. Um, of the bill. The bill will then be assented to by the Premier. Uh, the Act will then come into operation at the date determined by the Premier and proclaimed in the Provincial Gazette. Regulations to come into operation when the Act comes into operation. We also have received within this process currently some additional comments as was referred to by the Chair. The standing committee. Noticeably, the Pedal Power Association also gave some comments. Um, legislation currently in place to administer provincial roads. It's important to say at this stage that the, the old, we'd say old because they are really pre constitutional legislation, like the Roads Ordinance and the Advertising of Roads and the Ribbon Development Act. That um, legislation has been pulled into the current um, bill, and there's some aspects of modernizing the way we implement them, particularly around joint planning. Um, yeah, and as we'll come, we'll come to some of those newer newer additions later on. Both pieces of these older predated um, uh, um, constitution uh, legislation are outdated currently. So the bill seeks to consolidate the provisions of existing legislation and align the legislative framework with the constitution. The Western Cape Transport Act 2013, Act 1 of 2013, was originally drafted and assented to by the Premier in April 2013. However, it was not put into operation pending the process of drafting regulations. And due to changes, of, of the Act found necessary because of that, the the current bill, which is an which is one would say an amended bill, but a new a new amended bill, is therefore therefore replaces that Act of Act One of 2013. Consultation. Currently, we had vast consultation to date. The bill was published for comment during January 2020, during COVID. Uh, the commenting period closed 30th of April. We then engaged with various municipalities over a three-month period. The South African Local Government Association supported us. Um, City of Cape Town, we engaged with them in February 2020 uh, with municipalities facilitated by the Department of Local Government in March 2020. And then again with all municipalities post that in July 2020. And we want to thank those municip municipalities for the comments and the robust engagement. 
Written comments were received from several of them, including departments within the Western Cape government, uh, environmental affairs and, and tourism, environmental planning, as well as provincial treasury. Cabinet approved the bill on the 3rd of March 2021 for its introduction into provincial parliament. The chapters covered in, in the bill, there are 12 chapters, um, 72 clauses. Uh, if you do have a copy, you're welcome to flip up into the context page. Um, we'll be referring to some of those chapters now. Under Chapter 1, there are introductory provisions, which mainly speak about roles and responsibilities um, with, with, within the bill. Municipal responsibilities, provincial responsibilities, the responsibilities of professionals like civil engineers, um, town planners, as well as um, aspects around ownership of land is also covered in the bill under that chapter. Uh, under Chapter 2, we cover classification and categorization of roads and the declaration of roads of joint significance. We'll refer to that term quite a bit later on, roads of joint significance. I'll just paraphrase it as RJS going forward. In Chapter 3, we look at deeming provisions and regulation of municipal roads. Chapter 4, joint assessment process and uh, road transfer agreements. Chapter 5, railway lines, public transport roads reserve widths and ciliary transport infra infrastructure, building lines and building restriction areas. Chapter 6, planning and the declaration of transport infrastructure. In chapter 7, procedures of closure of transport infrastructure. In chapter 8, road subsidy arrangements. Chapter 9, advertising. And then in Chapter 10, Management and Control of Transport Infrastructure and, and RJSs and, a, and adjoining land or adjacent land. Chapter 11 deals with service infrastructure and the last chapter deals with important general provisions. There's also a schedule on those old legislation bits that I referred to and other pieces of legislation that will be repealed as a result of the bill being assented to. So let's look at some existing functions included in the bill. Many functions in the bill are the same as in current road ordinance, as in the current road ordinance and the Advertising Act. <clears throat> they include the declaration of roads. Provincial roads are declared by the MSC responsible for transport infrastructure. We also cover the categorization of, of roads. Um, declare roads. Declared roads are categorized as trunk roads, which we can call class one roads, main roads, class two district roads, class three and minor roads, um, class, class four. Uh, there's also later on we'll see and a, the RJS is coming in as another category and also public transport roads. Um, other existing functions, the expropriation and construction and maintenance of roads. Province is empowered to expropriate land for road purposes. Uh, province is also responsible for the management, construction and maintenance of provincial roads. Many functions in the bill are the same as in the ordinance, as we said, and in the Act, the Advertising Act. Um, they include also the road subsidy. Province subsidizes municipal roads to assist with the management and maintenance of their municipal main roads and their functions. So approval by province of activities along provincial roads and municipal main roads would be required. Persons must obtain approval of province for structures, accesses and services to be installed. Applications for subdivisions and land use changes must be approved by province in relation to the safety and operation of provincial road traffic. Advertising must also be approved by province 
in relation to the safety and operation of provincial road traffic. The new functions within the bill, in other words, beyond the Road Ordinance and Advertising Act, they include and provides for um, um, the declaration of provincial public transport infrastructure. These include public transport roads, I order public transport roads of a BRT type um, and uh, nature. Also passenger rail systems and freight rail systems, or one could say high and low order uh, rail systems. The new function also alluded to earlier are RJSs. These are owned by municipalities, but subsidized by province as they form an integral and critical component of the provincial road network. RJSs were previously confined to urban areas and termed municipal main roads. They are declared by the province under the ordinance. On the commencement of the Act and pending a joint assessment process, all municipal main roads will be deemed to be RJSs and will be administered under the new Act and under municipal bylaws. A municipality will be responsible for declaring a municipal road under its bylaws, and the province may declare municipal roads to be RJSs. The relevant municipality is the owner of its RJSs and is responsible for the financing, management, and administration. RJSs continued, the municipality must obtain permission from the head of department before undertaking prescribed activities on RJSs according to, of course, departmental standards and guidelines. Applications by third parties like developers and roadside owners in relation to, to RJSs must be submitted and approved by both the municipality and the head of department before the applicant may proceed. These, in, these include applications for advertising, accesses, structures and services within the road reserve. Red tape resulting from dual applications will be mitigated by special provisions in the bill. I think this slide also obviously speaks to the need to absorb some of the National Environmental Act provisions um, into these processes. So the bill doesn't um, exclude that. And that's quite important to, to mention. Now, other functions which are new in the bill is planning. Strategic planning or transport system planning is to be undertaken annually for the network of provincial roads and other transport infrastructure to determine, for example, the upgrading of new, new projects. So from an investment point of view, it's important to engage in strategic planning. Then um, arterial management plans of, uh, of high order roads will be required. Project planning is required for new projects and the upgrading of existing roads, including environmental assessments and consultation. Planning assessments are required prior to closure and de, -de, -de declaration of roads. Project planning is followed by the declara by declaration by the province. Another important addition to the legislation and incorporated in the bill is the uh, list of associated database of transport infrastructure. This is a, um, a Guillama or the Immovable Asset Management Act it requires this for, for uh, road asset management systems. Also ISO 55000 a global, global good practice in asset management requires um, for us to keep database of, of transport infrastructure um, and update that annually. So the province is to develop a list of associated databases of provincial roads and transport infrastructure. Municipalities are to, to develop similar lists and associated data for RJSs and make that available to province. 
the list of provincial infrastructure and list of RJSs um, must also be incorporated into a single database. And of course, the list of associated um, uh, the, the associated database must be updated annually. Uh, it's not, not to say that these things aren't happening. It is happening. It's important that that um, one also says that, but it's good to have it captured within the current legislation. Uh, we have the road network information system as an example, where we capture some of this information. Another new function within the bill is the joint assessment process. It's a process of reassessment involving the department and municipalities, which will consider all existing provincial and municipal roads previously declared under the ordinance. All categories being provincial trunk, main, minor roads, municipal main roads will all be assessed. This process will guide the transfer as appropriate of existing roads between province and municipalities. Where necessary, roads will be recategorized. We are currently busy within the city um, in a major exercise of reassigning roads between authorities. We've um, established a memorandum of agreement on the process to be followed. And I um, can gladly say that the process is well in hand and continuing as we speak. The process hopefully will be carried out to other municipalities going forward. <coughs> um, then there are, there's another process new in the bill, applications for service infrastructure. Service infrastructure includes telecommunication cables, pipelines, water, gas, oil and other services. The bill introduces new provisions regulating the provision of service infrastructure by persons and entities to be installed in or adjacent provincial roads and RJSs. Any public or private entity intending to install service infrastructure must apply for permission to province to comply with the bill. The regulations, we move off the point of new additions to the bill now to the regulations, which is supporting legislation for the bill. The department is in the process of drafting these regulations as required by the bill. Draft regulations will be advertised for public comment in the Provincial Gazette. Uh, targeted consultations will be held with all, all municipalities in the province. Comments will be considered and followed up consult with consultations as appropriate. The Western Cape Transport Infrastructure regulations will be made once the bill has been assented to. The Act will be brought into operation to synchronise with the regulations required to support it. The other um, supporting legislation would be draft standard bylaws. This is needed to ensure and encourage synchronization of provincial and municipal legislation administering roads. Standard draft bylaws have been drafted to assist municipalities to make municipal bylaws or amend existing bylaws and provide a legislative substance of the, to the following functions as listed in the Constitution. Firstly, municipal roads under which a municipality administers its municipal roads, including RJSs, and then billboards for advertising in public places under which munis municipality administers advertising visible from public roads in the municipal area. Consultations with municipalities will be on standard draft bylaws and will be undertaken by the department. <clears throat> we now move on to the implications of the bill on personnel or staff within our current um, setup in the department. Uh, the tasks required to administer the provisions of the current ordinance and the Advertising Act will continue and generally be taken up in this bill. Staff resources within the department currently undertaking the tasks are required by existing legislation will continue to do so in the new legislation. The bill will not require additional staff posts within the department. The department has undergone some restructuring within the roads branch. Um, there are a significant number of additional posts 
uh, added. They're not all filled yet. We've had some retirees recently. We've also had quite a bit of new metal management uh, engineers joining, which is good news. And and therefore, we don't foresee a major impact on staffing. In terms of financial implications, new processes introduced by the bill will have additional financial implications. These will, however, be minimal in relation to the to the annual budget. I uh, didn't mention earlier, but the current budget um, is about just over three billion for roads. Um, and however, the, fun, the technical need on our road network cannot be undermined because the technical need is 10 times that budget. And also the, the current value of the asset of over 30,000 kilometers of road is, is around 65 billion. So um, just to give some context. Additional financial implications arise from administering roads of joint significance with municipalities, <clears throat> payment of road subsidies to municipalities to manage RJSs. Uh, just to note that municipal main roads are already being funded and administered by fund, uh, but funding may increase to ensure adequate maintenance. Um, that That is to conform with current road asset management principles. So funding would potentially increase. The undertaking of joint assessment of previously declared roads is a once-off process. Development of arterial management plans and the compilation and updating of the list of associated data for infrastructure will also absorb some funding um, in addition. Chair, that takes us to the last slide. Thank you to you for your patience. I'll end over to you, Jay. Thanks. Um, thank you, uh, Ms. October. Um, that is possibly your second last presentation <laughs> to the Standing Committee on this bill. Yeah. Um, for sure. Um, colleagues uh, and guests um, on the platform, um, I'm going to provide you an opportunity to engage with the content of the um, the presentation, essentially the entire bill, if, if so be it. Um, and you could ask give questions, um, book and questions for clarity, for additional um, expansion on what has been stated. Um, the opportunity will be provided. I am mindful of the number of stakeholders who have already submitted um, their comments and their input in the, into the bill. Um, I will provide an opportunity later if they wish to augment these previous submissions um, and they, I will mention them by name. But for now, firstly, I'm going to open floor for members if they wish to um, comment, comment or um, ask uh, particular questions. Um, the opportunity is provided to the members firstly. Members, uh, if you wish to ask a question um, relating to the presentation, that's essentially the ball that um, you may wish Mr. October to clarify further or provide um, clarity or broader context, um, you may do so now. I'll start with the Chamber, Honorable Andrikas from the VSA. Yes, thank you, Chair. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I believe that there will be an op uh, opportunity later on for us as well to engage regarding the bill and so on. So I haven't got any any questions regarding the uh, presentation that we've had. I'm also looking forward to obviously getting other presentations as well as the, the written input and comments. 
that we've received and, and that I, I, I think you can expect that we will be engaging them. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Van der Wees. Isn't you quite right um, that the committee itself will have uh, ample opportunity henceforth um, to um, engage um, uh, with the bull in a more thorough manner um, before it gets passed by the committee. Any members online that would like to uh, make a comment? Uh, so, members online, I see a hand. Um, that Honourable August? No, thank you, Chairperson. I've got no comments or questions at this point in time. Thank you, Honourable August. Uh, Honourable Mbumbi, do you have any comments uh, at this stage you'd like to make or not? No, no, nothing, Chairperson. No questions, no comments. Thank you so much. Noted, Honourable Mbumbi. Um, 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 now I'm going to open up um, the um, floor for um, you know, the, our invited guests on, on the platform. I recognize Councillor Rob Quintus, who is the MMC for roads in, uh, in the city of Cape Town. And therefore, thereafter, I will recognize Mr. Erasmus from the Swellendam Municipality. Uh, Councillor Quintus, um, may. Uh, good evening, uh, and uh, thank you, Chairperson, for the opportunity to comment. Um, and a good evening to the honourable members, uh, as well as the other councillors and officials um, from the various municipalities and provincial government. And thank you for the opportunity to make comment. Uh, I would just like to address uh, that we as the municipality of the city of Cape Town are concerned uh, that this draft bill could potentially compromise the prerogative of the municipality to set our developmental agenda through the integrated development plan as provided for in the constitution and in terms of section 26 of the local government municipal access um, system act and the municipality's role as a, the planning authority provided for in the National Land Transport Act. Chapter three of the constitution and defining, defining the nature of cooperative governance delineates the parameters within which spheres must exercise their powers and perform their functions. Spheres are enjoined to exercise their powers and perform their functions in a manner that does not encroach on the geographical, functional, and institutional integrity of government in another sphere. They're also duty bound to cooperate with one another in mutual trust and good faith, the foundation for which is outlined in section 441 uh, 1H of the constitution. Be that as it may, the city of Cape Town is eager uh, for intergovernmental collaboration and support the increased effort being placed in compelling and structuring engagements between spheres of government and organs of state around planning infrastructure, pipelines and budget prioritization. It is important to note, Chairperson, that the city has commented on the draft bill in the past, both in 2020 and in 2021, where critical issues were raised and additionally, two meetings uh, took place in 2020 to discuss the bill. The city therefore requests a further meeting with the provincial government in the spirit of intergovernmental relations and cooperation to build around the following items, please. Roads of joint significance, the city's delegation as the planning authority within the municipal boundary, Railway lines, public transport roads, reserves, widths, ancillary transport infrastructure, building lines and building restriction areas. And then finally, also public transport roads. We eagerly look forward to meaningful discussions with the provincial government on these items and will then again make formal comment thereafter. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Councillor um, Quintus. Um, um, I'm recognising Mr. Frick Erasmus from um, Swellendam Municipality. Uh, Chair, 
Thank you very much for the opportunity. I, uh, I'm not sure is this only my opportunity to comment or can I also proceed with uh, my comments as well as uh, my other concerns in my uh, request to, per, uh, to present? Um, Mr. Rasmus, um, you may do both if you wish. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Chair. I think that uh, this poll is uh, highly appreciated, and I think it is, uh, from my perception, I think the intention is to make sure that uh, all roads infrastructure for transport use in the province entirely, that includes municipalities, is at a specific standard and usability to make sure that it serves the function to make sure that our economical activities will be uh, adequately uh, have the enjoyment to use those facilities. Uh, in the light of that, uh, I have certain concerns that I have not picked up in this bill. Before I specifically address the, the 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 challenges required in the in in in, in the bill, do you want me to put my camera on, uh, Chair? I can do so. Uh, my my challenge is uh, number one. Uh, I have uh, been working with in the railways for many many years, and I am uh, quite acquainted with the railway uh, 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 infrastructure uh, functionality. One of the challenges that I wanted to address, uh, and there's also this proposal that. The Western Province wants to take over some of the infrastructure of rail. Is the how are we going to make uh, regulate the railway versus road cargo transport? Because uh, the cargo transport more and more went from rail to rubber and and road and. Uh, and, it, and, 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 and the cargo on the road becomes an extremely higher burden on the roads. That was the roads was never designed for and never been created. And it also creates an obstruction on all our roads. So I cannot see that this, this bill address how that will be regulated and how that will be addressed, the, 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 the challenge with that. And in light of that, with the higher increase in trucks with transporting cargo, and it's particularly regarding the agricultural activities within our province, there becomes a growing demand for truck stops. And I will consider that the truck stops and overnight facilities becomes part of the transport infrastructure. And in the absence of that infrastructure and the absence of this proposed regulation that makes provision for that, it becomes by default that smaller municipalities alongside this economical roads uh, becomes uh, overnight truck stops. And a small municipality that Swellendam are congested overnight with all over in the industrial areas, in commercial areas, in the, in the residential areas, you find overnight trucks that stands and overnight in the streets. We know that trucks are exposed to criminal activities and they are, uh, they are threatened by all criminal activities. But now they are coming and, in a, uh, and, and then come stop in the municipal environment, in the streets, so that I could get some sort of a safe place to stay overnight and utilize the commercial activities to obtain food and and even some places they desperately required some sort of ablution facilities, which there is not currently. And I would love to see if this if this bill wants to regulate this kind of uh, transport that that we have the intention to, to accelerate economical activities by the utilization of our transport infrastructure. It needs to address that. In the other route, 
we are a province that is highly popular and plays a major role in our economical uh, activity is tourism. And as tourism now is dependent on this, uh, this main roads of bus routes and also even the taxis. And I could not find that bus stops and bus routes as officially uh, recognized and also taxi routes and taxi stops has been catered into this uh, bill, which I think that becomes a more growing, growing problem in our province. I don't want to talk to you about the rest of the country, but we are responsible in this position of the countries uh, of our province responsibility in taxis and buses. Now, even in my own town, I can see there's a growing tendency as fuel prices increase and, uh, and people cannot afford any other afford that. And by the vandalism of the railway transport, people are tending more and more to use buses. And there is no proper bus services and bus infrastructure where people stand in the street with their luggages and there is no ablution facilities and nobody knows how they're going to be created and how they're going to be funded. So this, this becomes a major problem and I have the expectation that this bill would address that. So uh, this is one of, one of my, my major problems. I'm glad to hear and, and I see it in the, 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 the utilization of roads of joint significance between municipalities and province now that province would most probably make a financial contribution towards roads. And then it comes to me to, to specific issues within the, uh, within the bill. And then I wanted to refer you to uh, part 2.2. The relevant municipality must, within its available resources, subject to this act and any other applicable law finance, finance, plan, declare, design, construct, develop, and con maintain control management, regulate, upgrade, protect, and rehabilitation municipal roads, roads of joint service, and ancillary roads infrastructure in an area of jurisdiction. Now, one of the major concerns that we are addressing with roads, roads is the municipal services within the municipality, but it also have the intention and plays a major integral road on provincial uh, interest is that although it says available resources, I'm expecting that this this bill must also put the method a finance methodology on the table. As roads is a major service in the expectation of municipalities. Well, municipalities are rated by the condition of their roads condition. People come there and say, well, this administration looks good or what, and what is the status of this administration? They look at the condition of the roads. But roads is a non-commercial service without a financial res uh, revenue streams. But still, we are reluctant on municipal level, provincial level, and national level to state. Well, how do you expect to maintain and operate roads, which becomes a national challenge? We are sitting with that, with a, a with a with an electricity challenge nationally, and we are heading for a major water challenge. But I think that the roads challenge is also uh, on the table yet, and because we are the, uh, our economical activities is dependent on the roads condition. But still, nobody wants to tell us how to put the funding model on the table to finance roads. And I think that province must make a, uh, make a decision to say, municipalities, you need to take a certain percentage of your property tax and invest it into roads. But then it brings me to another uh, source. There's also a, a, a fuel levy. And the fuel levy is accessible by Sunroll on a national level. It's also accessible by provincial. But the fuel level, despite the fact that many municipal transport pays for the fuel level, 
and they only ride within the municipal boundaries. They don't have access to the fuel levy to fund the conditions and the maintenance of roads in the municipal environment. So that remains to me a great concern because if we cannot align a funding model to this bill, we will not be able to achieve the intention of this bill. If I take you to uh, chapter five, two, municipal road administration by municipal consists of roads declared by municipality under applicable bylaw. Now the municipalities, even if they have a bylaw to manage it now, there is still an absence of a funding model. Roads contemplated in section 8.2 in respect of which classification as a road of joint significance has been withdrawn under the section 6 and order. Now I wanted to talk about this, uh, the joint significance. A municipality like Swellendam. Swellendam is in an awkward position. This is the place where the N1 transport joins into the N2 transport and vice versa. And those transport across the municipal uh, uh, municipal uh, main, uh, main road. However, the municipality must main, maintain the main roads all by themselves. And the expectation is if the municipality could declare the main road, where it is utilized currently by all these trucks and cross uh, from one municipality of one part of the province to another part of the province across the main road, it could be, be, be utilized, uh, considered as a road of joint significance. And then provincial needs to assist with the funding of that maintenance of those roads. And that that becomes one, one of uh, the also the problems now. Uh, deeming provision of the chapter three provision of roads in the regulated municipal roads and roads of joint adventure. Then set in nine. Regulation of municipal roads and roads of joint significance by municipality. A municipality must within its available resources. Now, regulate the finance planning and declare. Now, I uh, again come to available resources. Now, if a municipality have not any resources available, what would they do? Well, they leave the roads as it is because it sets. It's only a, it's only based on your availability. It does not state what is the uh, what is expected from the municipality and what is compulsory of the municipality to utilize, because most municipality is uh, is always in the position they will they uh, because it's not it is not financed. The municipality doesn't have because there's no there's no toll gates within the municipalities to obtain the resources to fund us. And I. I'm objecting against this available resources because available resources could be one rand and could be nothing. It could be a thousand rand, could be a million rand. From provincial government side, I'm expecting that they need to set a methodology here again so that municipality be obligated, so that, so that provincial governments oversight over all municipalities because they have a responsibility to oversee that economical activities can can smoothly been uh, used and be uh, functioned. And available resources is too vague to me to, make, to ensure that there will be adequate funding to that. Then in five further said, ensure that transport system planning of transport infrastructure under its authorities areas included in this integrated transport plan. There is a transport plan to say how it functions, but it nowhere tells how it's needed to be funded. Seven says a municipality must compile and keep up to date a list of roads and joint significance. And I hope that we will, in collaboration with the province now, identify these roads with joint significance. Be ensured that the list is available for inspection by public during office hours. C, upgrade the list whenever each such roads is declared and located. And D, submit the list as updated to the department. Uh, because smaller municipalities and you need to drive through these rural municipalities and because with their rural economy, there is no ways that they will be able to, to fund this. And Chair, uh, this is my plea to this committee tonight to say, 
please address these challenges because this is impractical, the challenges that we are facing. And I have high expectations that we can say if the province could participate and take over the jurisdiction of rail, then we need to see how we can utilize rail and distinguish between rail transport passengers and transport of cargo uh, versus transport of cargo on the roads. Uh, Mr. Chair, I think that concludes my my uh, observation of the of of the of of the, of the both and my expectation to this uh, and my council as a rural municipality. And thank you very much for the opportunity to make this presentation. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Thank Rasmus, you, Mr. Rasmus, for your Rasmus, substantial contribution. It is um, extremely valuable. valuable. I am going to um, ask the department uh, to respond to the first two um, inputs, and that of Councillor Quintus and um, those that presentation um, made by Mr. Erasmus. Um, Mr. October, uh, you can, and then direct to your team who may respond to some of the questions that you raised. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Chair, thanks a lot uh, also to the questions by Councillor Quintus and Councillor Erasmus. Um, I'm going to ask my team to please uh, follow through after my initial comments. Um, Councillor Quintus, thank you so much for the invitation to meet with the city. I think that's more than welcome and we will gladly through through the standing committee arrange such, such an engagement as part of the process. Um, uh, the issue about compromising the joint or the RDP processes, I think that's uh, uh, noted. Uh, however, there are tiers of government involved in integrated planning. Uh, for example, we are the custodians of the provincial land transport framework, which is a national requirement, and that feeds into documents like your RTP. Um, also, issues around cooperative governance, the need for, for example, integrated um, methods of delivery, are also something some things we can speak about when it comes to unpacking RJSs and their function delegations around that. Uh, noted also is your, your your interest in public transport roads. So and the, of course the impacts of land use developments. We've been engaging with the city on project at the project level um, on on many of these issues. And there's also within the current memorandum of agreement some processes that we've put into place that has gone both to city legal and to provincial legal. Um, I think at this stage, Chair, if I could on, on those questions and comments from Councillor Quintus, perhaps ask, ask any of the team members to, to make to make any comments. Um, just looking over my shoulder, if you don't mind. Uh, um, I'll ask uh, Ms. Amanda Tor from Legal to make some, some comments. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, thank you, Councillor Quintus, for your comments. Um, I fully agree that the request for an engagement is welcomed um, and will add value to the process. Just to note, um, the previous comments submitted by the city were fully considered, and I, these are, this is the first time this specific concern is being raised, at least in the formal submissions. Um, I'm not sure that Councillor Quintus did state that, State that it is necessarily a legal concern with the bill itself, um, but just to state that we have very carefully considered the provisions of the bill in light of the competence of the province to legislate, in particular in relation to provincial roads and traffic and road traffic regulation, as well as the duty of the province to support municipalities by legislative measures. Um, that we believe that the provisions are, of the bill are within the constitutional parameters. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Tom. Um, Thank you, sir. Um, we also have Tony Abramson online. Um, so I'm just seeing if there is a hand raised, Jay. We can maybe see. I can't follow on my screen. It looks like Tony's on. You could. Yeah. <clears throat> can I? Can I come in there, Carl? Can you hear me? Yes, Tony. Thank you. Um, yeah, yes, Mr. Abrams, we can hear you. Thank you. You're welcome. Good. Thank you. You can probably see me now as well. Um, yeah, thank you. There was a, a lot of very, very interesting comments came up from, from um, Mr. Quintus and from Mr. Rasmus. And I'm not going to try and answer them all, but I think if I can just touch on the, the one the one theme that came through both of those sets of questions was in relation to um, the the provisions that the bill has made for rail and public transport operations. Um, and I just want to try and clarify what, what what the thinking is behind that and what the bill actually does provide. <clears throat> of course, the ordinance which the bill is replacing um, dealt only with uh, provincial roads and also municipal main roads, which were which are belong to municipalities, but which are subsidised by the province. Um, and and the the thinking was that when the um, that it it would be an opportunity when that when in drafting this new bill to provide for the 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 possibility as remote as it might be for the province to establish um, new rail facilities. They could be for public transport. They could be for freight transport. Um, but these are, these systems would be quite independent of the existing rail systems that are currently owned by uh, Prasa and by Transnet. Um, in other words, there was no intention through the bill for the province to take over rail systems from those two national bodies or those uh, two state entities, if you like. Um, and it's probably unlikely that 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 this this could happen. But at the time of drafting the bill, that was really the thinking. Public public transport roads is a related theme because it was felt that the province may at some stage, uh, somewhere in the province, may wish to establish a road exclusively um, built for public transport services, such as the such as the BRT um, main lines that you find here in Cape Town. But there could be other ones. That the province might be more appropriate a body to develop. Um, so, so um, I just wanted to clear that one first. Um, and, and, a, and perhaps also in picking up on on the whole um, theme that that Mr. Rasmus was was uh, feeling, I think feels quite strongly about, and that is that um, that the roads are having to take the burden of freight that used to be carried by. The old sets in the old days, but with the demise or the the reduction in the in the in the usage of of, of rail freight rail for for cargo, um, you know the the roads must take the burden and the, the consequent damage to roads and also the the requirements for facilities along roads. The the bill actually does provide, uh, you know, when, in talking about truck stops and so, such like things along provincial roads. The bill does make provision if there's a need for, for example, a truck stop to be established to service the needs of trucks that that, that could be done by by um, accommodating them in um, uh, alongside roads or in in, in um, um, I'm trying to think of the term in the um, uh, the um, related infrastructure public trans or tr transport infrastructure which there's a um, a list of different types prov uh, provided for in the bill. Um, so, so th th those thoughts, I just, I just wanted to respond on public transport and rail matters. But I, I would also like to move on to this whole discussion about roads of joint significance. Um, and it also comes down to there's a thing that was mentioned by Councillor Quintus and also mentioned by Mr. Rasmus. Um, Roads of joint significance are are a special kind of animal um, that, although they are municipal roads, carry a huge amount of provincial traffic through 
um, uh, built up urban areas. And this, is, this is an historical situation. Um, and and the, the, these, these previously called municipal main roads will automatically become roads of joint significance once the bill is, uh, is enacted. Um, and there's a later process, which, which Carl mentioned in his discussion, in his presentation, about the joint assessment process, which will reevaluate whether all of these municipal main roads should in fact stay uh, roads of joint significance or whether there should be other roads of joint significance established. And the province um, uh, takes on the responsibility of ensuring that these uh, roads of joint significance passing through municipalities are, are properly looked after because they carry provincial traffic on a continuous sort of basis through the system. So there's a definitely a partnership between the province and the municipalities on ensuring that the roads of joint significance are properly um, uh, maintained, managed, and with a uh, with a big emphasis on on the on the preservation of the roads as opposed to the construction of new facilities. But of course, uh, there's a there's a, a, a plethora of other roads in municipalities which are let's say ordinary municipal roads for which the municipality is totally responsible. And unless, uh, I think the bill, the, the, the thinking behind the bill is that unless the uh, roads in municipalities are proven to be uh, of provincial significance, then you can't really declare them as a road of joint significance. And therefore, it wouldn't be that easy to attract funding directly from uh, Mr. October's department. Um, so I think I'll stop there. I, I, I haven't answered all the comments and questions, but you know, these are some. Of, this is some of the thinking. Thank you, Carl. Okay, thank you. Um, if I could maybe elaborate just a bit further on Councillor Erasmus's comments around funding and available resources, I think that's a very important point, and it's something we share mutually across the sector. Um, with the bill does make provision for a, a road subsidy. Um, it's it's in a, at the moment the regulations are in draft, but our thinking are to, is towards a sliding scale where regional municipalities share a bigger percentage, also based on the income of those municipalities. It must be said, particularly for routine road maintenance um, activities, and a lesser percentage towards upgrades and capital works or new works. The bill also makes provision um, for, for in Chapter 12 for the, the HOD to exercise certain powers around the ownership of RJSs. And it's important that province can actually take over the ownership with joint planning and across municipalities. The, the funding model, um, I think, in some innovative ways, in, can be accommodated for in, in, the, in such a way. Uh, there are also agreements one can undertake, um, as well as agreements with other entities that the municipality would like to pull in, like private donors and so on. Um, the, the fuel levy was mentioned. Yes, uh, at the moment, the transport sector does not directly benefit from the current model, and, and therefore it's important to, to perhaps outside the bill, look at provisions for, let's say, revenue streaming for, for road and transport infrastructure separately. Um, that's something that's happening through industries like the South African Road Federation and Sabita, the Bitumen uh, Association, where they're looking at what's called a road use charge as a possibility for futures within the road sector. That simply means that we look at a kilometer charge, but we quantitate, we quantify that carefully uh, in terms of uh, road usage going forward. As I said, that's a provision outside the bill, but definitely something that we as the sector needs to address. Um, issues like, for example, a weight, dis a weight distance charge and so on could also be mentioned there. Um, uh, I might be looking over my shoulder again if there's any other comments um, from my team. On, uh, perhaps around the subsidy or anything, Mr. Penner? 
Chair, just the uh, truck stops, uh, I think we call them in the, the bill uh, uh, Clause 161C, Direct Access Service Centre. I think that's probably what, what Councillor Erasmus has in mind. So they are catered for, um, and, and could be constructed uh, alongside the, the road. Um, just a reservation on the uh, subject of subsidy for uh, the RJSs. Uh, if a road is not currently an RJS and a council, a municipality, wishes uh, to have a road declared one in order to make use of the subsidy arrangements, uh, it uh, would be free to do so, uh, apply for for a road to be declared and subsidised. Thank you, um, Mr. Fanner. Uh, Mr. October, are you, are you done? Okay, just a correction. Uh, Mr. Erasmus is not a councillor, as a director if, uh, responsible for infrastructure in Swellendale. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, um, Mr. October and your colleagues, and also Mr. Abrams online and, and those who are present in the chamber. Um, I hope um, your response um, uh, would accommodate the concerns raised by um, Mr. Erasmus and Mr. Quintus, and I'm sure the invitation to have further discussion through the City of Cape Town will be pursued and um, I, th I think it will be very helpful um, for both the city and, and, and um, the provincial department. So, um, colleagues and guests, are there any other uh, questions that um, you may have, I see there's a hand. It's an old legacy hand. You know, we don't say old hand there. Okay. Uh, we, we have received formal submissions from the, the following um, stakeholders. Um, I'm going to um, mention them by name, and then I will ask whether you have any additional um, you know comments or submissions that you'd like to make that um, so um, I'm going to start with um, Drakenstein municipality um, we, we have received your formal submission Is there any other concerns that you'd like to bring to our attention Uh, Jay, good day. No, thank you. We are covered. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lotz, um, uh, for um, that. Um, I see Mr. Erasmus is on um, Mr. Erasmus. Is that a, a previous hand or is it a new hand? Sir, Chair, it is an, indeed a new hand. Chair, uh, yes. Please proceed, Mr. Erasmus. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, just to uh, come back to the truck stops, way bridges. The way bridge in uh, in Swellendam on the N2 is a very popular and a well-known uh, way bridge. And uh, this way bridge have been functioning quite effectively. If you remember yourself that how many uh, people were caught with uh, with uh, all irregularities there, so uh, with Parliament and all those kind of things that they were caught here in drugs and even there was also the other day uh, uh, weapons and ammunition that they were caught at this truck stop. Now, on this truck stop, as 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 good as it function, the the people or the of the uh, trucks and all these illegal people try to avoid the truck stop. And then they, 
then they are now driving through the town to avoid before before the truck stop they get into the industrial area and then they drive through the whole town uh, pass uh, the uh, the CBD and then get uh, later back onto the N2 which uh, a, a proper transport uh, traffic flow analysis would be very uh, uh, important to to identify these challenges. Now. So and then that in the and, and then the, the issue of the truck stop. I think that the truck stop uh, challenge is is far is far greater than than just a, a line direct access of services sites. I think that from provincial side uh, analysis needs to be done and truck stops positions needs to be identified. It cannot be open to uh, to the commercial market to say. I want a truck stop. I got place on my property of that now, because some of these truck stops would not be on, on 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 a sensible place. There is a certain needs of the truck truck flow and traffic, and I think that this bill must allow a traffic flow analysis that say that we identified where a truck stop is is required and that we addressed it not only on the roads of provincial uh, ownership, but also on, on, on central roads, so that we can so that we can make sure that these truck truck stops are properly facilitated uh, in a human manner and with evolution facilities and whatever refreshments and food they wanted to buy. And make sure that these truck stops get out of residential and uh, and 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 and, and, uh, and municipal environment in the streets. I can assure you, if I can could take you now at this very moment in Swellendam streets, you would be shocked where trucks were stopped across this whole place. So the whole Swellendam become now a truck stop area without without facilities and without the blues and facilities and you can imagine yourself the mess that they're creating over and, over and above how they are uh, driving on the roads and the turning on the, on, on intersection how do they destroy these uh, municipal road design capacity uh, exposed to this heavy duty because some of these roads are not even properly designed for three ton trucks but now they are exposed to 40 Plus, done trucks with the agricultural nature and all other activities, and and I am I am pleading to this committee that we must make sure that we properly address these challenges to make sure that economical and sustainability of our infrastructure and the provinces will be will be sustained. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, um, uh, Mr. Erasmus, uh, for those comments. Um, uh, we we have city of Cape Town who has uh, substantially uh, contributed uh, in the past, and uh, Mr. Councillor Quintus have um, stated uh, additional concerns, and um, Mr. October um, has committed um, to the request that uh, two teams will meet to. Um, discuss further the concerns raised by, uh, by the city of Cape Town. So I'm not uh, going, not going to request whether um, the city has further concerns, but if Councillor Quintus would um, make an additional follow-up comment um, on the response that he received, um, he's most welcome to do so. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, no, I will not make further comment at this stage, um, only that uh, through my office we will be reaching out um, uh, to the provincial government to meet um, as soon as possible uh, to uh, discuss the items raised earlier. Uh, and I thank you for your acknowledgement of our submissions of 2020 and 2021. And uh, we will then, after this meeting uh, with the provincial government, uh, submit uh, for further comment to the to the draft bill. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Quintus. Um, and further on, we have Mr. R. A. Stanway. 
is a transport engineer um, who also um, submitted a submission um, to um, the department in relation to this particular bill. Is Mr. Stanway on the, on the platform, Jan? If Mr. Stanway is on the platform um, in the meeting, um, if there's anything that he um, wish to add um, that may augment his previous submission. Jefferson, I, he was on the platform previously. I think he has subsequently left the meeting. Okay, th thank you so much, um, Johan. And then we have Mr. G. Lang, um, the Vice Chair of the Pedal Power Association. They have also previously made a submission, and I would like to recognize Mr. Lang if you wish to make any further um, sort of input in relation to the previous submission. Thank you, Mr. Lang. I recognize you. Thank you, Chair, and good evening, everybody. Good evening, councillors, officials, honourable guests, and other attendees. And I think just firstly to start off, thank you very much for the opportunity to comment and also being invited to the session this evening. Um, I'm not going to go into detail on our comment, but just a couple of, of sort of broad pointers that come from our comment and also the, the conversations earlier this evening. I think one of the things that the bill does miss is the whole issue of um, sustainability and the environmental crises that are facing us at the moment. Um, there's a massive shift at, at national level in terms of the President's Climate Commission and our contributions in terms of the nationally determined contribution to carbon reduction. And whilst transport um, only provides or, or contributes currently just under 11% to greenhouse gas emissions, this is heavily skewed because of, of ESCOM's um, power, coal-based power setup. In any other country, we'd be sitting up at sort of in the region 25 to, to, to 30%. It's just because of the skewing of our energy um, platform at the moment. The big issue is in that our cities and urban regions, the GHG emissions contribute, uh, transport contributes 40% of GHG emissions. So it's a massive, massive issue in the cities. And we all know we're going to be urbanizing far more. And I think the, the very good presentation earlier on from Mr. October actually just, or uh, Mr. Rasmus, just actually put that together very well in terms of the, the percentage of roads that sits within our urban areas or the provincial roads that sit within our urban areas, the provinces roads. Um, we can, you know, we can go into detail about the just transition, which is massively important in taking the country forward, and how transport is a is a significant contributor to that. And I think the the bill doesn't pick up on that strongly enough at all. Um, the climate crisis I've mentioned, and particularly from a cycling perspective, a number of countries around the world are developing what are called cycle highways, which link urban areas, um, small settlements to each other. And one of the things that we have suggested as PPA is that we include definitions of cycle paths and cycleways. The bill does describe or does define a pedal cycle, but doesn't go into any detail on cycling or walking infrastructure at all. And with the number of people that walk, particularly walk and are now starting to cycle, we need to bring that into the bill specifically. Looking at the linkages between between urban centres, between settlements, there is an opportunity to create cycle and walk, walking paths that are not necessarily linked directly to a road. And it may well be worthwhile looking at these as opportunities that address desire lines. You know, a, a child going to a school might travel 18 or 19 kilometres on a road, but may only have to go four or five kilometres from his or her house to a school if there's a different desire line looked at. So I think it's something that we do, do need to look at in, in, in the bill. The other thing that, that the bill is not strong on is looking at, it, it does mention external funding, but there's an $8 billion allocation towards a carbon reduction. And transport infrastructure, transport planning could benefit very strongly from that $8 billion if, if, the, if it's linked directly to GHG reductions, mitigation and adaptation. So there's a strong opportunity for additional funding to come in there. And I think particularly municipalities with the support of the province could be beneficiaries of this if we look at it very, very differently. And then just picking up um, on, on Mr. Rasmus's comments around the truck stops, one of the things that will be coming through, and it's, it's, it's unavoidable and it is coming, is the charging stations for electric vehicles. 
Um, and we need to think about this. I know the bill touches on that, but we may need to expand on that. That's sort of the evolving technology conversation that's coming out. It's not something that we picked up in our submission, but just listening to Mr. Rasmus made me think of that. Um, and then, yeah, I, you know, I, the, 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 the accessibility of the bill to the general public, we just need to think about that a little, a little bit. You know, we as transport planners, transport engineers can understand it, but it's, it's just that, that accessibility to the general public. And I do think one of the things that we do need to do as well is look at the enforcement of regulations. I know we touch on bylaws. Um, but it, and it's not necessarily part of the bill, but in the regulations, we really need to start looking at how we enforce um, behavior. The, the, the province was very, very bold in, in being the first province to declare the, the one meter law for, for cyclists being passed. There's not been one single prosecution in the province that has found a driver guilty of um, breaking that, that, that law. And yet we've had a number of cyclists killed and injured, which means they have broken that law. So we need to look at that very carefully. It doesn't necessarily sit within the bill here, but it's something that we do need to think about in the regulations. And I certainly, we welcome the the, the initiative and we would welcome the opportunity to comment on the, on the regulations and be part of going forward. And I would like to do an offer similar to Council Quintus's, Pedal Power will happily engage around anything that, that the province would like us to engage with. And thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Lang. Um, for all your uh, input and comments. Uh, I'm going to call upon um, Agri Western Cape. Um, Mr. Vessels, if you're online and if you'd like to augment, I uh, know you have made a submission. If you'd like to comment on that submission, much appreciated. Thank you, sir. Over to you. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you for the opportunity to to um, be part of this meeting and, and ask comments with regards to the bill. Um, I'm Louis Vessels and I'm from Early Western Cape. Um, for those that's not familiar with our organization, we serve commercial agriculture in the Western Cape and approximately three and a half thousand um, commercial uh, producers. Uh, I would just like to to mention um, a few points um, with regards to our submissions. Um, our points is more of a practical nature um, concerning agriculture. Um, firstly, I would just like to mention that we have concern with regards to the definition of um, uh, advertisement in, in the bill. And um, without laboring the point, um, I would like to just quickly touch on what the definition says. And it states that it's any visible representation or of a word, name, letter, figure, object, mark, logo, or symbol, um, or of an abbreviation of a word, name, or combination of such elements having the effect of transferring information and drawing attention to something. Um, our specific concern with regards to the definition of an advertisement is um, regarding name boards and signature on um, entrance gates of, of farms. We we are concerned that that would be construed as as um, an advertisement, um, and in our view, it could it should rather be viewed as a street name and house number equivalent to um, to signatures or signage in an urban area. Also, very important for um, rural safety and for the police uh, emergency services to be able to identify. Um, different farms and, and people living farmers and farm workers living on that farm and we would just like to receive clarity that that um, farm names and signage on um, farm gates would not would not constitute um, advertisement. Um, I'm quickly going to gloss over, over the over other two points I have and specifically with um, section 33.6 and it deals with um, the entry on and taking possession of property. Um, we do not have a, a um, big concern with um, Section 36 as a whole, but Subsection 3, Section 36.3, um, it gives um, the owner of the property seven days to provide the reasons for um, that that he that he thinks um, his property should not be um, uh, why he refuses um, to to allow. Um, transport onto his property. The reason we have a, we have a concern regarding that is agriculture is quite seasonal. Um, in plant planting or harvesting time, seven days may not be 
be enough. So we would just like the, to have clarity and if we could um, think about prolonging that time to uh, 14 or 21 days. Actually, the rest of our submissions, um, are, we are happy with the written submissions that we provided and uh, would be happy to discuss that further should, should it be required in future. But at the moment, um, those two points are the two critical points that we wanted to raise. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Vessel. So I can assure you that um, the uh, complete submissions will be um, considered um, in the process. Um, is there any other um, person on the platform in the meeting that would like to um, make a comment or ask a question for clarity before I hand over to the department for a response? Thank you, Art. Um, Honorable Van der Vesselsen, I recognize you in the chamber. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, Mr. Erasmus, reference to ancillary uh, road infrastructure just uh, made me think of things such as, for example, um, overhead signs uh, and, and, and numerous other infrastructure that it seems to me you would like to take up into that asset register of you, but that may perhaps not be provided for in terms of the current list of uh, uh, categories of ancillary uh, infrastructure. Uh, where would you, for example, you know, uh, list things like street lighting, uh, uh, overhead signage, etc., or would uh, items such as that not be reflected in that that um, uh, uh, asset register that that uh, that you referred to. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Van der Versailles. And uh, lastly, I'm going to ask any other members on the platform if they would like to um, ask a question or pass a comment. Thank you. Um, that's it. Uh, thank you, um, colleagues. Um, for your questions, I'm going to hand back to the department to um, do a final response to the inputs that we've received so far. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thanks again for <clears throat> all the questions and our submissions, which will commit ourselves to going through it carefully. Um, regarding the comment again by Director Erasmus, <clears throat> Truck stops, of course, uh, Sunrail is not in the room, the South African National Road Agency, but they have a huge role to play with N1 national roads and routes of national significance. They do own portions of the way bridge system on, on national routes together with us at province. However, many of those way bridges are administered or operated by provincial entities, um, provincial traffic, provincial law enforcement, and some of the provisions within the National Road Traffic Act would provide for that outside the bill. However, we in the department are also busy with a freight route strategy, which will identify freight routes um, within a framework. Now that study has uh, been approved through cabinet, at least the strategy. And there are components that are being delivered, amongst them being the freight route strategy. And of course, digitizing our road network provided for within the bill, chapter 12, um, as was mentioned by uh, Mr. Lang, is, is an important uh, future. We're looking at how to how to connect and, and, and the road user with infrastructure in an intelligent way. And that speaks across all modes. So the bill is a bit silent on specific modes, but it doesn't mean that within the joint plan planning sphere um, and with artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things and so on, that we will not be addressing these things intelligently. Uh, cycleways are intrinsically included in joint planning, as well as NMT, buses, trucks and, and pedestrians. The um, comment on the 8 billion contribution, 
Thank you for mentioning that, Mr. Lang. Um, the our response to what we call the ESG goals is is important. Uh, the United Nations addresses many of those goals. The Development Bank as well. So we need to start speaking that language in our joint planning. Uh, e is standing for environment. The S for social um, impact and the G for governance. And so it's so important to to look at what we would like to deliver within that space and within a sustainable transport um, system. Thanks also to Mr. Vessels. Um, we've made comments around um, advertising and names and farm gates. I will certainly take that up and perhaps one of my colleagues would like to mention something around that, um, as well as the time frames for seasonal uh, activities within agriculture. Uh, regarding the the overhead signage, uh, gantry, street lighting that Mr. Van der Wees hasn't mentioned, um, of course we the, the listed activities or the listed database will be georeferenced. In other words, there'll be coordinates. So it's an uh, it, it follows the TMH18 principles of asset management. So it's not just a mere listing, but it's also uh, connected to a GIS system. And uh, after that, that addresses your concern. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, um, uh, Ms. October. Um, I see I have follow-up uh, comments, uh, questions um, um, from Mr. Lang and uh, Mr. Rasmus. Um, I recognize Mr. Rasmus first and then Mr. Lang. Um, Mr. Rasmus, it's over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, regarding the remark around, uh, around street lighting, I think that street lighting plays an integral role of uh, of the road. We can call it uh, road furniture, but I think uh, road illumination plays a major role. And uh, where 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 the, where, where, the uh, where the provincial roads passes through or adjacent municipalities. Uh, and I wanted to make the example of the R60 at Swellendam and the R62 in Barrydale, uh, where, there's no, where there's no street illumination. The municipality is not in a position to provide street illumination on those areas. And somewhere it needs to be properly addressed for safe riding uh, for because you sit with an integration of the local traffic with the uh, provincial traffic on that same road as it is becomes now an integral part of the municipality environment. But it is for long that we are, have this challenge and the requirements of street illumination on these roads. And there is clear uh, 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 standards in NRA standards and also IRB standards regarding street, street illumination and the purpose of street illumination. So uh, my colleague that have made this remark previously is important. Signage becomes a more a more problem uh, in the information uh, environment and, 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 and generation that we are living. And street marks and, and sign boards needs to be properly aligned with the need and, uh, and, and the standard with that uh, the expectations that Mr. Rasmus, you faded away, you still there? Okay, that's no, what stage you lost me because it seems to me somewhere my uh, my my uh, microphone become Muted. Uh, uh, noted, Mr. Uh, um, can you please Mr. Yes, I, I just wanted to uh, iterate. I don't know where did you lost me uh, regarding the street light illumination standards on the roads like the R60 uh, passing uh, Swellendam mm -hmm. and the R62. So, uh, we, we bless you with the signage. Uh, the traffic lights. Uh, or, the, or the signage. On the signage, uh, my uh, my uh, my remark is that we sit with a with a 
expectation in current day with information access and people that rely more and more information. And we need to align signage on that information that will align with the expectations and the needs of people that are uh, what we what required with signage. So uh, it's just in alignment of my colleague that previously made uh, this uh, remark around, uh, around street lighting and street uh, information in signage boards and such. I'm not talking about advertisements. Advertisements is something different and I don't want to handle it to talk about advertisements at this stage. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank, thank you, Mr. Erasmus, for those follow-up remarks and questions. Um, I finally recognize uh, Mr. Lang. Um, recognize you. Thank you, Chair. Um, and just, just thanks to, to Mr. October on the, the comments around the ESGs. I think the one, well, the one suggestion that I have is that we just broaden that to looking at the Sustainable Development Goals, which is the 2030 agenda of the United Nations, to which we are a signatory as well as a country, and specifically SDG 11, which talks to basically access to opportunity for, for communities. Um, and if we look at the SDGs more broadly, they talk to to the ESG principles. And if and and the PCC is specifically looking at the SDGs as the departure point for the just transition. So when we have the conversations, it might be an idea just to broaden it beyond just the ESGs for the moment. That's just a, a, a another suggestion. And but but thank you very much for recognising the importance of ESG in what we're trying to do. Thank you, Mr. Lang. Um, Final um, response, Mr. October, and then we will take everything together and wrap up. Uh, yeah. The chair, not not from me personally, except um, maybe my colleagues. Mr. Uh, Carstens would like to comment on advertising. I don't know, etc. Um, thank you, chair. Um, yeah, on um, the question of Mr. Louis Vessels um, about. Uh, concerned about farm name signs and, and things like that. Um, uh, it is important to identify farms and uh, uh, we uh, in the regulations that will be published after the promulgation of the act, it is spelled out, um, you know, how advertising is dealt with and um, farm names are actually exempt from uh, having to apply but uh, there are some conditions um, that we recommend uh, uh, certain minimum text sizes for it to be legible, for instance, uh, safety uh, principles in the regulations. So um, that was just a th something that I wanted to add to Mr. Vessels. Um, to Mr. Lang, uh, on the, uh, you know, this whole sustainable transport is actually a, a national transport uh, policy aspect and I don't believe it is really something that is uh, fitting for this uh, uh, bill that we deal with at the moment. This is a bill about powers to declare where public, where transport infrastructure must be and how to manage it in the province. Um, then uh, on the street lighting um, and Road traffic signs. Um, road traffic signs are regulated in terms of the National Road Traffic Act. So that's also not outside this bill to regulate uh, traffic signs, but all road authorities must apply national legislation in that regard. And um, yeah, street lighting is also safety aspects, but uh, that goes hand in hand with development. So, uh, um, you know, uh, there is a cooperation and uh, one can uh, work together uh, with local authorities in that regard. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carstens, uh, for that response. Um, colleagues, um, allow me to express my sincere and heartfelt gratitude to, to all the stakeholders and municipalities who have taken the trouble to provide valuable insights and comments and submissions that will only but make this bill uh, a better bill. Um, 
your um, cooperation in that regard is highly um, regarded and um, most welcome and, and, and the way forward um, it will um, may not incorporate everything that you um, suggest needs to be in the bill um, but uh, I'm sure in the process of finalizing this bill before it is being in, enacted um, all the comments will be considered by the department and um, and uh, certainly um, we hope that um, it will provide a fine piece of legislation that will direct and guide us with regard to transport infrastructure development within the Western Cape. And from my side, uh, Mr. October and your team, Mr. Carstens, Mr. Fanner, Mr. Tor, um, for the many hours that you've put into, um, you know, presenting us with um, the uh, legislation that we need to consider. And I am uh, absolutely certain that we um, will have further engagement with regard to this bill. Um, but we hope that within the third quarter of this term, this bill will be enacted. Uh, that is the um, sort of ambition. And I'm, I'm sure, hopefully, we will, if the program allows it, we will um, do that. From my colleagues, I'd like to thank you, colleagues, for um, also availing yourself at this um, public hearing. Um, and my colleague, uh, Honorable Father Vesas, has put it so nicely in terms of the constitutional mandate um, that is um, sort of expected of us to allow um, um, the public and all stakeholders that are affected by legislation um, to participate in the process. And this is but this uh, part of that particular process towards um, dealing with um, legislation and matters that affect um, external parties. And um, I wanted to ask him to, to, to bring that text along uh, because I didn't have my constitution with me, uh, but it, it was most appreciative. Um, so, colleagues, with that said, um, this concludes our public hearing process. Um, from here, we will collate all the submissions, um, including those that we have received tonight, and then forward that to the department for consideration and incorporation into the bill. And then we as a committee will also get um, a matrix of all the submissions from all the parties for our reference once we consider the um, bill in committee and then um, we will take it from there. Um, Jan, is there anything else I need to say? Allow me to say thank you, Mr. October and all your team for your sacrifice, Honorable Van der and Honorable Wimby and um, Honorable August and all the guests on the platform. And last but not least, um, as, um, Mr. Sirat Hassan, who is the technical support from ICT and um, Fundu, um, who provides secretarial support to the committee. Um, and that concludes this particular meeting. The meeting is adjourned. May you all have a safe journey back home. And thank you, people, for being present in our meeting. Thank you. <laughs>